Following yesterday's thrilling triple header, we've got another jam-packed episode for you. Seven matches on the docket, including the final of the Costa Rican Cup. And will we end up on top in the opening stage of the Primera División? We're going to find out together. And welcome back one and all to episode number 54 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. If you have enjoyed the series so far, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe to the channel. Please and thank you. I appreciate all of your support. For those of you who are not that familiar with how Costa Rican football works, the season is split into two stages, the opening stage and the closing stage. There are 22 matches in each and each stage is followed by a playoff. If you win each stage, you go straight through to the grand final, which will determine the champion of that stage. We are gunning for that this afternoon. We've got a six-point lead with six matches remaining, but a tough test right off the bat against Alajuense, looking to potentially knock us off of our perch. And we are going relatively unchanged from the lineup that we saw in the final match of yesterday's episode. The one big change is Freddy Gonzalez. Well, he is back in the lineup. Duarte feeling a little bit knackered after all of the game time he's gotten while Gonzalez was out on injury. He will be joined on the back line by Herrera, Innocente, and Hugo Cordero. Conte, of course, will be getting the start in goal. Aquista and Castro will start in the midfield. Marrera will man the number 10. Tusha and Getz will be on the wings. And once more, it's Edward Lopez. Of course, with so many matches crammed into the season between the league and the continental competition and the cup, a couple of other players may have some tired legs. We may need to make changes sooner rather than later during the match. And our next match is coming up against Liberia, sitting in third place, tied on points with Alahuense, just behind on goal difference. So we may need to rotate the squad for that one. So if we can get out to a massive early lead in this match against Alajuelense, I think we will be in good shape for the next match and for the rest of our running. Aquista playing it forward. Cannot get it to Getz. Intercepted by Alajuelense. Rogerio runs into some traffic. We'll drop it back for Valencia. Ahead for Alfaro. Up that right wing, Cordero taking it to the edge of the box, moving it to his left foot, putting the shot on, and just missing it wide. Alajuelense asking some early questions of the Saprisa defense as Conte sends it long. Gonzalez will control and play it to Innocente. Has some options. Picks out Herrera. Quickly, Marrero through to Lopez. Heavy touch, though. Valencia will knock it back to his goalkeeper, and Kozhevnikov will look to send it long. Alfaro heading it into our box, and Conte will just lay on top of it while the attacking players retreat to a more defensive stance. We played 11 minutes in this match, and so far, most of the action has gone Alajalense's way, but gets. Feeding it up the left wing. He's got Tusha dropping it back for Herrera. Back heel pass almost picked off. Aquista. Marrera turns, fires, and scores a beauty. I honestly wasn't expecting this from him. Alfaro almost picked it off. Aquista. Marrera right along the line. I don't think the goalkeeper was expecting it either. And Saprisa jumping out to a 1 0 lead on our very first shot on goal of the match. I was about to say, long story short, we're doing well, but can be doing better. It's going to be a little bit tougher. Edward Lopez picking up an injury to his foot. Esteban Cordero is coming in. Tusha to Morero. Another shot from range. This one is going to skip wide. It was tipped by the keeper, so it will be a corner opportunity. Just a couple of minutes remaining. Here in this first half, Marrera will take it, plays it into the middle. Innocente can't win the header. It's regained by Getz. Marrera looking back post, but he is going to be called for offsides. It just bugs me to no end when the corner taker cannot get back into an onside position before he's going to be fed the ball because he naturally is going to be pretty much wide open. We are going to make one change as we head toward the half. Steven Aquista will be replaced by Luis Alfaro. We will keep our eye on Castro for later on in this half. But with a 1-0 lead after 45, feeling pretty good. We did manage to get four shots off in that first half. Three of them on target. First highlight of the second half, about six, seven minutes in, and it's turned over. Acuna going the other way. Numbers for Alajuelense, but we are able to win it back. Gonzalez 
to Alfaro. Moreira, quick pass up for Cordero behind the defense, and he'll put it past the keeper for his eighth of the year to make it 2-0. Moreira let no moss grow on that ball when he received that pass, put it ahead quickly, found Cordero in space, and that was all she wrote. Alo Valencia may be leading us in shots on goal, but of their nine, they still have yet to hit the target. And we've got the 2-0 lead. Herrera, back post looking for Getz. It will be cleared, but Ibraguen cannot get to it. Cordero plays it to Castro. Alfaro feeding it left. Tusha in a bit of traffic, so he will drop back before once again returning it to Herrera. Knocked away by Martinez. Alfaro quickly to Tusha. Into the middle. Can they clear it away? No, Marrera will nod it down. Gets with a drive. We'll go over the bar and we will make our second change to the midfield. Audrey Castro will come out. Michael Sambataro is going to come on in. He's not naturally a midfielder, but we really just need a defensive player in that position. We're also going to pull off Vitan Tusha, bring in Jose Pablo Espinosa, who will flip on over to the right-hand side. Willem Getch will move on over to the left wing. Eight to nine, your shots on goal in favor of Ala Jolense. As we mentioned, six shots on target to nil. And with 15 minutes left in this match, we look to be in absolute control. In fact, Ala Valencia has not had a shot on goal in at least the last 30 minutes of game time. And a corner for Cordero. Innocente pops it up. Gonzalez wins it. Out wide, Cordero gets back post. It goes over everyone's head. Espinosa will track it down outside the box. Play it back. Gonzalez, great touch, but his finish, not so much. Still not a shot on goal for Ala Valencia. As we hit the 90-minute mark, Espinosa back for Cordero. Looking to get a third goal, Alfaro will play it forward. Marrera, who has been excellent in this match, will play it back to the safety of Gonzalez. Cordero with it once again, back to Gonzalez. Three and a half minutes remaining of added time unless more gets put on. Alfaro winning it back, pushing it ahead, still with it, dribbling. Not really his game, but... Hey, he's doing it well. Plays it to Getz. Drops it back. Sambataro with a drive. Nope. Well, it was fun to see Sambataro at least go for goal. Ala Huelense just could do nothing in the final 45. And it showed we ended up hanging on to a 2-0 victory. And that victory for us, coupled with a 5-1 win for Santos over Liberia, has propelled Santos into second place on the table. We are nine points ahead of them. Ala Huelense and Liberia, but Santos is a team we have not yet faced. We take them on in this episode. So we hit the road wondering which Liberia team was going to show up, the one that just lost 5-1 or the one that played us hard earlier in the year. Well, our answer came five minutes in as Vitan Tusha chips the goalkeeper to make it 1-0. He would be involved in our second goal as well, sending it forward. Morera moves it past the defender, blasts it home. 2-0 Saprisa. We would add a third after a handball penalty and a successful conversion from Cordero before the half. And then the floodgates just opened wide. Juan Pablo Espinosa dropping it down for Johnny Castro's first goal of the year. Alejandro Brand had a massive match coming in in place of Steven Aquista, drilling it home off of a free kick from just outside of the box. Now, before the match, Espinosa came to us and said, boss, we should be playing more. Well, he just found himself on the end of a William Ramirez cross for his fourth goal of the year. He would get the play started on the next one as the ball fed forward. Marvin Alfaro drilling it home far post. We were just running all over them in this second half. Very little fight in this Liberia team. Johnny Castro adding a second goal late on in the 79th minute. We would make it 9-0 as Castro laid it off. Luis Alfaro wide into the middle. Cordero poking a header past Poros, who was frankly poor in this match. We did get a little complacent at the end. Six minutes of regular time left. And Cam Brunero did get one back. But 9-1, your final score. Liberia only managing two shots on target. We hit the net. In 12 of our 21, 9 of those 12 found the back.
Our return home against Cartagines was a bit more of a cagier affair. It took 19 and a half minutes for the scoring to get opened up, but it was a back post header by Willem Getch that did it to give Saprissa the 1 0 lead. A lead we hope to take into the locker room, but Carmago had different ideas. What is it with these turnaround shots? They tied it up at 1. That's where the score would remain until the 85th minute. A drive by Willem Getch will ricochet. Off of a defender for Cartagena, credited as an own goal, 2-1. And then Edward Lopez would put the exclamation point on that cake to mix my metaphor. 3-1, your final score. We took 19 shots. A lot closer in this match than it looked. They gave us a run for our money for 84 minutes. But in the end, three more points. So with a 12-point lead on the table with three to go, although the second-place team does have a game in hand, so nothing's solved yet, all we need to do is beat San Carlos to qualify straight for the grand final. We got a 40th-minute goal from Vitin Tusha, and that would be all we need. One note, your final score, although Esteban Cordero did have a goal called back for an offside in the 65th minute. We outpossessed them. We outshot them. We outworked them. San Carlos even went and parked the bus down a goal for the final 10 minutes. And we are through into the semifinals. And more importantly, we have qualified for the opening stage grand final with the opening stage all wrapped up we rested all of our starters for our first of two matches against santos and they took advantage taking the lead 20 minutes in putting it past david hernandez but sebastian azofefa just outside the box delivers on a free kick to equalize at one but santos would come back deep ball razak into the middle back for torres past david hernandez to put them up 2-1 heading into the break at halftime but with 10 minutes left to go we put our pedal to the gas kiros picking up the goal his second of the year past Barrientos, and we would add another just as the original 90 was coming to a close. Aquista into the middle, finds Gomez, 3-2. Your final score, 20 shots on goal from our substitutes. Santos, though, did score twice on three. We may need to have a little bit of a talking to with David Hernandez. We were hoping to have a full squad for the cup final against Punta Reynas. However, Jesus Ceballos and Andre Castro are cup tied. Daniel Herrera, Mohamed Conte, Michael Sambataro, and Nassim Innocente are all off on international duty as well. So changes needed to be made. Our chance to win our second piece of hardware this early in the season, it's just mid-November, and it's going to rest on the shoulders of David Hernandez in goal. Luis Mora, Jorge Ramirez, Randy Duarte, and Hugo Cordero as our back four. Aquista and Luis Alfaro will man the midfield. Diego Moreira is going to be at the 10, at least on the attack. We are as we should be. Vitan Tusha on the left, Philem Getch on the right, and Edward Lopez starting the game at striker. Throwing a combination of battle-worn veterans and some new faces into the lineup in this cup final. Our form has been spectacular. We have won our last five. It has been a couple of episodes since we dropped a match, let alone points. Well, we did drop points in the last episode, but you get my point. But we do have to take care of business in this one. Off of a final third throw-in, Mendez in the box, finds Ali, who picks out the top corner, beats Hernandez to put Punta Arenas up 1-0. Almost forgotten how thin this pitch was, so we've made some tactical tweaks. Let's see how well they do. Played in the box, gets across. Vitan Tusha drills home his 11th of the year. It's tied at 1. Didn't take long for our adjustments to take hold, scoring on our first shot on target of the match. In control once again, Aquista plays it across. Mora flipping it forward. Lopez in the box, clanks it off of the crossbar and in. However, the flag has been raised and that will get called back. IU looking to send it long. Tusha deals with it, but it's won back by Garces. Mahecha. In control, up for Ali, who scored the Punta Reynas goal. Ali sends it in. 
Jean-Baptiste in behind the defense, but his shot will go out wide. Goal kick for Saprissa, putting a little bit of pressure on us, something we haven't really seen at all in the matches in this episode. Yes, we did go down 1-0 and 2-1 against Santos, but that was a fully rotated squad. This is the toughest challenge that we have seen so far in this episode, and we enter the second half tied at one. The team felt very good coming out of the dressing room for the final 45, leading six shots to five, but a corner opportunity flicked on by Torres, and that will go over the bar. No harm, no foul. Ali Yassim and Vitan Tusha, your goal scorers, tied at one, heading into 20 minutes remaining in this match. We're going to need to make some changes. Let's see what happens here. Stephanie Kista has it knocked away by Torres. Ali will take it away. Ali Jassim, the goal scorer, moving it up the right wing. Plays it into the middle. Cordero is there. His headed clearance, though, picked up by Mendez. And he beats David Hernandez to make it 2 one, I just knew that bad things were about to happen. We have some exhausted players. Espinosa is going to come in. He'll take over as the right back. Hugo Cordero will slide into the middle. Ramon is going to come in in place of uh, Edward Lopez and will act as striker. Luis Moreira to be replaced by William Ramirez as we make a triple change with 18 minutes remaining in this match, down by a goal. And we're going to go more attacking, and we will demand more from our team. But a throw-in. Highlight coming for Punta Reynas. Ali taken down in the box. Oh, man, that is absolutely going to do it for us. Ramirez just into the game. Dragged Ali down, who steps up to the spot. And can't beat David Hernandez. There is still life in this Saprissa team with about 15 minutes left to go. But Ali will have a corner kick opportunity to send it in. Look how narrow this pitch is compared to the ones we are used to. Torres dropping it down, but Cordero is not going to be able to find the target. Just about 10 minutes remaining in this match, and we are going to go all out. Espinosa to throw it in in the 83rd minute. Ramon in control, plays it back. Hugo Cordero, Marrera, back for Cordero, across. Nice switch of play to Ramirez. He'll have it knocked away by Ferreira. And Punta Reynas looking to go the other way, taking their time. Leal, Cordero. He's got space in front of him. Gets around the defense. Ali back for Cordero. His shot will just be dragged wide. We are running out of time, my friends. Less than five minutes in. And I cannot believe that our winning streak is going to end in this fashion. Just absolutely no gumption in that second half. Punta Arenas was the better team on the night, and they are going to lift the Copa Costa Rica. We're going to wrap up our league play in the opening stage off camera. We've got one match to go against Santos, but we have sewn up our position in the grand final. We missed out on a piece of hardware today. Let's just come back and get it tomorrow. If you enjoyed that episode, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you have not already, and come on back for more action as we chase the American dream of winning the CONCACAF Champions Cup. That's around the corner, by the way. It's all coming tomorrow. I will see you then. Bye-bye.